Hello, my sock universe. Well, Sierra yeah, Roundup plus a little bit of if the East, Turkey, and Greece we also look at because uh, there were a few results happening that might be interesting. But it will be mostly about Italy here. I still have to decide how I will divvy up. I want to make uh, four review videos, uh, you know, um, each focusing on one of the top four leagues and then add France to one of these and uh, see how I do with the rest. I know Germany and Austria probably will be, will go together. Um, yeah, showing this Wednesday morning, I was briefly thinking, shall I wait for Lazio to play against Verona tonight? But the uh, reality is, is my last uh, day where I'm staying home. I go back to work tomorrow. Um, fortunately feeling better, but you know, you always gotta take one additional day. So uh, happy about that and I will <laughs> rest right after this video as well to really make sure that I'm all healthy again. So uh, that's why I decided let's make the weekend and I'll give you the Lazio video uh, probably Friday morning together with other stuff that was happening in the midweek. So uh, let's start in Serie A. I am wearing Lazio because Lazio again uh, had a ridiculous result and probably is a little bit over their uh, bump that they had uh, last week. Uh, if we go through the results, I didn't actually again, it was a busy weekend and uh, didn't really help me getting better as well. Um, Bologna Brescia didn't see I didn't see many games but uh, it's a 2-1 win for Bologna and Cagliari plays a 2-2 against Parma um, then I saw uh, in the end in, in, in the evening I wanted to watch actually Sassuolo Roma but when I got there it was already 3-0 for Sassuolo and I thought that's not gonna help anything and this will I even pointed to my wife do you see crazy result here not gonna watch this. It was 26 minutes. Caputo, Caputo, and Juricic uh, that made it 3 um, 0. However, Roma came back uh, late uh, in the second half. Jaco uh, and then a penalty from Vera 2 made it 3 2, and you thought there might be something in there. No, Boga a minute later makes it 4 2, and Sassolo gets kind of a famous win. And I have to say, this was a bit of a neck breaker for Roma. Should have won the derby already, and now I open up the door for Atalanta to walk through. But before Atalanta could walk through, Juve played Fiorentina. And Fiorentina played Juve well, I gotta say. Uh, the scoreline is ridiculously high, because uh, especially in the first half, uh, you, uh, Fiorentina was well in the game. And probably should have scored. Um, in the end, it's a, a penalty given on Cristiano Ronaldo in the 80th. He continues his crazy score, scoring streak. I think it's now eight games in a row that he's scoring at least one goal. Well, he got a second one because there was also another penalty given. So he scores two penalty goals. Makes a 2-0 and then stoppage time. De Ligt gets a goal as well. And it's, uh, as I said, a much harder scoreline than the actual game was. Um... Juve gets it done. Juve does not look convincing. Uh, you know, when you look at teams that look convincing, Juve definitely is not there. They have the talent, but there's something wrong with the squad. Um, I said Atalanta, the door was open for Atalanta to walk through, but again, they make a blunder at home. Only 2-2 two -two against Genoa. What I, Atalanta is a side that I really don't understand at times, especially against those lower level level teams. And, you know, last weekend they beat uh, Torino away from home 7-0. Now it's a 2-2 at home. It was actually 2-2 at the half. Um, Toloi gives Atalanta lead. Krishito with a penalty equalizes. Then Gena takes the lead. And Ilicic, uh, who has been also in free scoring form, uh, makes it 2-2 before the half. A late uh, red for Behram, a yellow red. Uh, sees them, sees Genoa finish with 10 men, but Atalanta cannot find the win. Now to Lazio. Lazio had a really a rough patch, and then they continue against Ball, their free scoring, scoring form. Immobile after just three minutes. It's ridiculous how good Immobile is in Serie A at the moment. And I emphasize in Serie A, because in other competitions, I don't see him as uh, outstanding. But in Serie A, he is outstanding. He's a near unstoppable force. And the one thing I have to say, uh, not only is he scoring, but he also shares the wealth around. This is remarkable. Caicedo in the 16th. Immobile again after assist by Lazaro. And then he, he again assists Caicedo. 4-0 at the half against Spal. 
absolute dominance there. Um, they make it five to Arekanje. Uh, Lazari assist in the 58th, and then only Spal can pull one back, and the game ends 5 1. In that form, Lazio is a contender. If they show the form they showed in Naples and in the Rome derby, I'm not so sure. So I'm not sure where we are with Lazio. Uh, the Wednesday game against Verona will be a tough one because Milan played Verona. That's a game that I watched in full. And I uh, have to say, Verona played really well. This was, I think, an 8th against ninth matchup, so mid-table matchup. So... Uh, while I think of Milan someone who should go up and Verona one more towards the bottom, Verona is a really good team and uh, it showed they were probably, for most of the game, the better team. Milan has to do without me, Ibrahimovic and Kier um, due to a flu. Ibrahimovic probably hurt a little a little bit because they probably need a little bit of the gal uh, in front, but Rebic and Leao uh, did work sufficiently well, but it was the first 30 minutes, it was all Verona. Uh, Milan did not, con Verona was controlling. Milan could not get anything going. And Faroni gave a Verona a well deserved lead. I thought for a second it might have been offside, but it was not. Um, they, uh, Donnarumma had to make a few saves, and it was only in the 29th when a free kick was given. The Chalonoglu finally scores a free kick goal. It was deflected though. Uh, I remember when he was bought uh, in 2018, they say, well, he's a good free kick taker. And I think I cannot remember him converting a free kick. He surely must have. But this is the first time that I actively it switched to me. Yes, John Nogli made a free kick goal. Was deflected. From that moment on, in the first half, Milan was then the better team and uh, could have shortly thereafter made it 2-1. Uh, did not go through. Then second half, similar story for a about um, yeah, 25 minutes, Verona the better team. Twice he hit he, hitting the post, once having clear chances. Donnarumma uh, really extended himself. I really thought this is a game that Milan will lose. And then, game-changing event. A uh, really harsh tackle of Amrabat on Castillejo. I know he wanted to go for the ball. The referee saw it also. And then, if you look at it in replay, he hits the shin. Really reckless tackle. Straight red card. That turns the game around. Milan now going going forward. Milan having chances. Uh, but a little bit the, the off target. Way too often. Castillejo hits once to post. Uh, but most shots go just above goal. There was just some punch in a way missing. And it ends 1-1. Given the other results, it's not all that bad. But overall, I have to say, you would expect—I would have expected a win out of that one. If you have a win, uh, you are clear in uh, sixth place because also Cagliari didn't win and Parma. Uh, they played each other, so it was actually well served for Milan to uh, go in sixth. So uh, they did not move up. Lecce. Big win over Torino. Torino, although they played well against Milan, I have to say, uh, that doesn't speak for Milan, to be honest, um, they uh, lose again by a huge scoreline, 4-0, and Mazzari is a goner. Uh, which is weird, because uh, Torino really started well, and now they took a tail. Uh, five, so... Tailspin down uh, doesn't look uh, didn't look good. So Mazzari is out, and Torino will continue with a new manager. Um, and yeah, it is a worrying downward trend for Il Toro. Uh, Udine Inter was one of those games, a typical Inter game, uh, where Udine actually could keep the game open, but Inter just could not convert early, early, early on. And I saw. Uh, most of the second half of that game and I gotta say uh, at the point where you thought that Udine might actually come out and do something that's the point where Lukaku took the ball and um, in a way it was stupidly defended against Lukaku puts it in the, in the net Udine then tries but then um, yeah, the mother of all penalties the goalkeeper out and takes down a striker 
and it is uh, uh, Lukaku who scores his second, makes it 2-0 for Inter. Derby coming up. Uh, Inter will be without Martinez and um, got a two uh, match ban and also some uh, Hamdanovic is also with the flu so um, the Inter squ uh, squad is a little bit ravaged but then they bought a lot of players still would say Inter is the high favorite against Milan but I sure uh, would hope for something different and then uh, the big game in Monday night and yeah, I saw most of the first half and then I, f I followed it. I just uh, was not with my full attention there, but it was a wonderful game. Napoli uh, playing at Sampdoria, uh, taking a quick lead through uh, Milik and then Elmas after 15, 16 minutes and you thought, done and dusted. Nope, Gagliarella with a really wonderful shot, pulls one back. And um, then they even got the equalizer, but it was ruled out by VAR. So it could have been 2 2 at the half. Um, I hate those Napoli jerseys. Why can't Napoli just play in white with blue pants? Uh, something like that. I even think if, if they play in light blue, although their jersey is a little bit lighter than the Sampdoria one. I just hate those green jerseys. Play in the black one that you have. That would be the right one. Uh, Sampdoria gets the equal. They were really working hard, harder than it. Gabbiadini threw a penalty, and I thought, wow, that game could turn. And then Napoli turns it on, on again. And after a defensive error, uh, Deme just can slot it into the empty net. He is a good addition for Napoli. And then very late, it was a huge uh, added on time. Mertens makes it 4-2, and Napoli continues their winning streak. And maybe Gattuso has found a formula to get Napoli also in European contention. So let's look at the table. You with three points ahead of Inter and uh, five ahead of Lazio. However, Lazio has a game in hand. Could be 52 by the end of the day. But as I said, Verona might be a tough opponent. Um, Atalanta now has a clear Lazio, Inter, Juve. Those are the three that seem to be set for the Champions League and probably also will fight for the title. Uh, Atalanta and Roma at 39 look kind of safe at the moment for European sports. And so is the pack. Yeah, I would say Cali, Parma, Milan, Hellas, Napoli, Bologna. Those are the ones that could get into the European sports. Torino is already an outside bet, especially now with uh, the dropped form. Sassuolo, Fiorentina and Udine is, are the kind of no-go teams in a way. I have to coin this term, the, the no-go teams. They will not uh, have to be careful to not get relegated. Could get into the European contention with a run, but uh, overall they will not go in, in, anywhere. It's really Lecce, Genoa, Brescia, Spal. Those four are fighting for relegation. Let's also quickly look to Turkey, where there was one big result that uh, leader Sivaspor lost 5-1 at Gaziantep. Um, also, we had um, Trabzonspor Fenerbahce, where Trabzonspor uh, won 2-1. That's a big matchup in Turkey. And on Friday already, Bajakshi here beat Ankara 3-1. And they are now chasing Galatasaray also against Kaiserispor with a win and if you look now at the table it is Sivaspor uh, still on top but now the gap closes. Uh, Bajakshi here uh, only two points behind. Trabzonspor is on uh, behind Alanya, Fenerbahce and Galatasaray Besiktas. So the three Istanbul uh, giants are well behind but you always have the feeling that they could move up there. Big things also happen in Greece, uh, less so with the results, but the whole uh, double ownership of uh, the Pauk, front of uh, Pauk and Xanti, blah, blah, blah. Lots of mess going on, and seemingly it's not allowed. The uh, Greek Federation, or uh, the Greek government, actually, upon being tipped by Olympiakos president, uh, kind of wanting to relegate both Xanti and uh, Pauk now they are threatening with points deductions it's a big big mess uh, I think if the government hands down this and they go 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 with it I think Greece will be um, uh, the membership will be cancelled for FIFA and uh, consequence UEFA Let's take this all aside. I I honestly have a hard time to grasp it all myself because I'm not an insider, but there's a lot of stuff happening. And we just had the peace talks a week ago. 
Olympiakos beats Xanti 3-1, <laughs> how convenient. And then in the um, on Sunday evening, the big game between Panathinaikos and Power Panathinaikos winning 2-0 and is in good form. But uh, all that it means is that now Olympiakos is top again, Power two points behind. Um, Aik and Panathinaikos are now in the uh, remaining European spots and seem to be that those two are in there. Uh, we had Xanti and Ofi, uh, OFI. I always say Ofi because we called my brother Wolfgang Wofi and then Ofi. Yeah, this was kind of, we always said, this is your team. It's OFI. Uh, were up there, but I think they're losing now track and it's really the big four. Uh, and Olympiakos Pauk on top and then I can Panathinaikos make the other two spots. Well, that was the final roundup for the weekend. First February weekend. Uh, let me know what you thought about the uh, games, how I summarized them. If you saw anything more, especially the games that I didn't see, if you know more about Greece, fill me in the comments below. It's just a mess there. Also, let me know what's happening in Turkey that the big three Istanbul teams are not top of the table. And do you think they will come in up? I have a feeling they might. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And yeah, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you.